Om Shanti. It's um, our great pleasure and an honor to have Brother Nirer amongst us this morning. Nirer Bai is someone who holds a very special place in all our hearts because Nirer Bai has a very soft, loving and gentle heart that enables everyone to have a vision of Baba and also to understand what Baba, Sakar Baba must have been like. Some of us, I was going to say, but most of us didn't have the fortune of meeting Sakar Baba. But Nirabai did have that. But together with that, he holds a very special position in the organization of the Brahma Kumaris. He's known as the Secretary General of the Brahma Kumaris Ishwarya Vishwavidyalay. And so today, on this special day, the day when we anticipate and look forward to meeting Bhaptada, it's a tradition that we hear from Nirerbhai because he touches that place in our hearts that brings us close to Baba and enables us to experience Baba very easily and naturally. So it's my pleasure to welcome Nirabai amongst us and to share with us. But I also would like to welcome Sister Wadi. Sister Wadi is a very good friend of mine, but I think a good friend of many of you. And Wadi Ben is one of the people who've uh, been in Gyan for 35 odd years. And I know that she and Nireb, I also have a very good friendship. And so today's topic of friendship, friendship with God, is quite appropriate for the two of them to converse about so that we can learn to have a relationship of a friend with Baba. So thank you, Sister Wadi, for agreeing to facilitate this conversation and to get even more out of Nireb. He's not listening to me right now, but maybe he has four ears that he's listening to something else as well as what I'm saying. Right? You see? He wasn't listening. Thank you very much. Enjoy. I don't care. Okay. Om Shanti. And uh, welcome first to my dear brother and to all of my brothers and sisters in front of me. And a little apology for running a little bit uh, late. I know you were busy and uh, Nirverbai was also busy. He has so many uh, titles, I wouldn't even know where to begin. And I think that most people uh, who are meeting him for the first time are probably not aware of the multitude of things that he does and is involved in and has been responsible for, including this very hall that we're all sitting in. And he has that wonderful ability to be extremely busy and yet look like as if he has all the time in the world to just sit and give you drishti and toli and some um, words of wisdom. So, um, two thoughts today. One is, of course, to speak to the topic itself, but also knowing that there are at least 350 of you who had the ring ceremony yesterday, so it means you're here for the first time. So you don't really know Nirverbai. And so to whatever extent we can, I'd like to reveal a little bit of, of, uh, of him to you through this conversation. Um, the topic is supposed to be Kuda Dost, which is God as the friend. And you may or may not know the meaning of Nirverbai's name. And so that's the first thing. I would like to start at the beginning um, when he was given the name on being born and uh, the significance of the name and how it has affected or influenced his life and how he has managed to remain true to the name, which is also almost like a title. So, Nirverbai, could you explain your name and how you've carried it all these years? Om Shanti. 
First of all, a hearty welcome to all of you, my dear sisters and brothers and spiritual friends. That's what my name means, friend of all. Nirvair. You see, this is uh, one of the words in praise of God from the Indian Sikh religious scripture. In the beginning of that scripture, God is praised and from that the word Nirvair, who is, one is Nirbhav, fearless, Nirvair, who has no enemies. That was the name given to me because I was born in a religious Sikh family in Punjab and I don't know at what age they give the name I think it's within some days of uh, birth. Days, within eight days of birth so that's what I I know now I didn't bother about my name until I finished my schooling and joined the Indian Navy and there I could think about it because there were people from different parts of India coming together during my training period and this name helped me a lot to make friends with people from all sides. Later on when I joined Brahma Kumaris, I learnt the real meaning and then application of the same and that was very good for winning friends, not influencing people. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so this is in short. Okay, mm. so Nirvarbhai came to Baba in the late 50s, 59 at which time he was a <coughs> naval officer in the Indian Navy and very speedy realization of Baba and then uh, about 10 years later um, just after Baba had left the body he came and became uh, a resident of uh, Madhuban and so would like to uh, hear from him how he saw God as the friend and, and was it a progression? Was it first as the father? Maybe you could tell us a little bit about that first meeting with Baba. See, God is known as mother and father. First mother, then father, then teacher then Satguru, then friend. So, in practical it happened like that. Just after one month of coming to the center in Bombay, Mama came there and she stayed for about a month. So, it was very nice for me and my other friends that we received sustenance directly from Mama. And Mama endeared everyone with her words of wisdom. If you go through her murlis, very simple, but there is so much of depth. We used to hear from our senior sisters, Baba is the ocean and Mama is embodiment of different rivers. Firstly, Saraswati, the goddess of knowledge.
second thing mamma was very deep in meditation her secret is that when she came to baba she decided once for all that she would be belonging only to one supreme no one else second thing in her speeches whenever she would speak to us it was something like we had so many questions in the beginning and in her speech all the questions would be answered i once asked mama mama how do you know what goes on in your in our minds because we get the answers in your murlis immediately and mama said mama just comes to the class internally connects with the supreme one, supreme father and whatever he wants me to share i share the same so that way very simple ways but the vibrations of love of peace and the depth of wisdom from mama would endear her to everyone one and all and without anyone telling there would be immediate feeling of the holy mother and belonging to her so this kind of relationship was formed during mamma's stay in bombay and i started writing to baba and baba would write back just after 3 months my ship had to sail away from bombay and i got a bit scared because when we go away from our center how shall we continue studies so i wrote to baba and baba wrote back sweet child there is nothing to fear wherever you go early morning you can have half an hour or so meditation and then read the murli ba- baba would arrange to send you murlis regularly and that was arranged i wanted to meet baba after 3 months but then being in service indian navy i was transferred to another ship the new ships had been received from england and those people who had been to england for several months they had to go home for on holidays and so the replacement <laughs> so i could go and meet baba after 6 months that was on 13th july 1959 myself and uh, two of my other friends and our teacher sister urmila who is at gandhi dam these days so we all went to madhuban and after reaching there the meeting with sakar baba and mamma mamma was also there at that time that took place 
Now this meeting was totally different from the normal meetings we have in the world. I have shared that experience several times in the class, you might have heard about it. After bath, everything, we went to Baba's room. I think you must have gone to Madhuvan and seen the way Baba's room is there. The bed is there, there is another mattress down below covered with white sheet. So Baba sitting on one side, Mama sitting on other side down below, and we sat in front. While coming to Mount Abu, the sister was telling us, please don't forget, Baba is going to ask this question, did you ever meet before? Don't forget that you met 5,000 years ago. But my interest was something that I must experience what I have heard, what I have received in the letters in which Baba wrote, a day will come when father and the child would meet face to face. I want to experience God's presence. So, as we sat in front of Baba, very close, not so much distance. And I was looking towards Baba, and Baba was giving such sweet, sweet drishti. It was so magnetic. And I just wanted to feel the vibrations of the Supreme Being. And I, I remember it was something like trans experience. I could see the glow of Shiv Baba's light on Baba's forehead and very powerful, very magnetic, very enchanting, very sweet, very loving vibrations from Baba's side. That was so uplifting. I just remained engrossed in experiencing deeper and deeper and in that, those moments, in about 10 to 12 minutes, I just felt this is what I was searching for. Baba, you are now here, face to face with me. And from now on, this life will be for your work, your service. And this was something like my thoughts reaching Baba and Baba accepting me, held me in his arms, giving me very warm hug and then a piece of tolly in my mouth. That was the way my first meeting with Baba happened. Then, of course, meeting Mama the same way. Then the other brothers also met. And uh, after meeting, Baba spoke to us. I think the way Baba speaks to us in the Murlis, Baba had so much value of the Murlis. So Baba shared what the morning Murli said, some of the points, and then advising us 
before going for lunch because it it would have been breakfast and lunch so brunch before going there before going to the boli dadi's kitchen you should read the murli advising our teacher in charge urmila didi read murli to them first and then go for breakfast or lunch whatever and then the second thing baba said now the children have reached home be comfortable baba will be meeting you very often every day because those days anyone coming from any part of india the system was we would stay for at least one week so that was such a beautiful time not many people in madhuban at that time the same old bungalow was there baba staying on one side in between one room where the sisters who used to write murli they used to stay then a veranda and then across the veranda was a big room where two brothers from madhuban used to stay and three of us we stayed in that room in the old bung- bungalow mm-hmm. we used to didn't have amrit vela those days <laughs> but morning murli class starting at about 6:30 15 minutes meditation baba and mama sitting in front down below small seating arrangement and we would be sitting very close to baba and mama and i remember the wonderful experience when baba would give drishti immediately it would bring that beautiful experience of super sensuous joy and the face would become so big with happiness and then baba's murli listening from just four five feet or three feet you can imagine how intoxicating it must have been so beautiful so beautiful and afterwards after the murli getting up from there going to mama's room which was beside that then sitting there someone reciting a poem someone reciting something else baba and mama also saying a few words and then distributing totally to everyone so this used to be a daily morning routine before breakfast you were by at that time you were what about 20 years old yes i was 20 wow and i that- had turban on and little beard also <laughs> just like robin bhai where they um... but robin is not having turban <laughs> were there many other 20 year olds and at what point uh, do you feel that uh, baba mama daddy kamarka started seeing something special in you well or were you already aware that you were special you see we normally believe god writes our life stories i can't say anything about it but i understand when i met baba and spent one week rather 10 days other brothers they uh, my friends they left after one week and i had requested baba i like to continue staying in madhuban for a little more while because i had two months holidays so i could spend more time 
Baba said, this is your home, stay as long as you wish. Why? Because in youth age, we like so many things. I liked playing with Baba, indoor games, and in the evening playing badminton with Baba and Mama. Of course, Dada Vishwaratan and Chandrahas, they were also there. And in the evening class, we used to listen to the service newsletters coming from different centers and Mama's Murli, then Baba's Murli, 15 minutes each. And then coming to Baba's room, and Baba would be just relaxing, and we would sit around, and Baba would be sharing some stories of Baba's connection with the rulers of India, Nepal. So it used to be like such a sustenance in the beginning what we say that it starts with father, teacher, not Satguru at that time, mm -hmm. friend, you know, you can play indoor games, cards or carom or anything only with friends. And while we were playing, Lachudadi, she would bring some fruits and Baba would first feed everyone and then accept himself. Sometimes early morning breakfast with Baba in Baba's room. Just imagine Garam Garam Fulka. Then and there the chapati filling that with butter, this much, and sugar. And then Baba feeding Levache. <laughs> Your Verbi, um, one of the stories that I've always liked is of uh, Arjuna who was, he saw Krishna as his friend, and then at one point um, realized this isn't just my friend, this is God the Almighty. And so, did you ever confuse the two things? Did you ever think of Baba as the friend when really you should have been aware that it was the Almighty Authority? Did you ever play mischief? Well, in fact, I had uh, the experience of having all sorts of relations with Baba. And uh, maybe, uh, I had lot of respect for Baba, I had lot of respect for Mama, I had lot of respect for all the senior dadis and dadas. In fact, my upbringing in my worldly home also, it had been very nice that way, that we must respect all the elders. But here in Mama's Murli's, Mama had explained something very beautiful. Normally people say you should respect your elders or seniors. You should give love to the younger ones. But no one had explained what about our relationship with our... Uh, Peers. You can say, hmm? Peers. Our peer group, our equals? Compatriots, yeah. So, Mama would say, those who are equal to you, give them also respect. And those who are junior or younger, even they need respect, not just love. And Mama was an example of that herself. She would always, you know, addressing me like Nirvair Ji, I would tell her, Mama, please call me only Nirvair. But she had her own ways, always mm. the same way. 
Now, answering her question, mostly I remained very, very obedient, very careful, very loving, very respectful towards Baba, never, never saying no to what Baba would say, never. And that had endeared me to Baba. Baba gave me so much, so much love these days. If you have to meet Dadi, you have to ask, you know, the sisters around, what time can we meet Dadi? And just imagine Baba telling me, sweet child, you can come to meet Baba at any time. Now this, this freedom could be given to whom? In whom Baba had so much confidence, faith, love. And uh, while having such close relationship, I should say what, what you are asking, I should say this was something like a test for me. And it's very, very subtle test. When I left my job only for service, godly service, Baba had helped me a lot at that time. And then Baba asked me to go and start a business of radio manufacturing because I was electronics engineer. Now in my heart, I was just thinking, what should I do? <laughs> I have promised to my officers when I left the job I won't use this knowledge of electronics engineering anywhere. And here Baba is telling me to go and start business at his son's shop, Naren Dada's mm -hmm. shop. But because Baba is telling me, he was there in Bombay at that time, it, this was the year 1963. So I went to his shop. There was conflict in my consciousness. And because of the conflict in the mind, can you imagine, I suffered from fever, 102. So I came back from the shop after three o'clock and rang one doctor who came and gave me some medicine. The fever went away, but it left me a little weak. So next morning, after Baba's Murli and breakfast, I was supposed to go, but I was feeling weak. So Baba asked me what happened, not going to the shop. <laughs> And I just said, Baba, I am feeling quite weak. Yesterday I had fever, so I am thinking I'll go tomorrow. Baba said, fine. Next day again, when I went after the Murli class and breakfast, again the same thing happened, again temperature, 102. So I was wondering what should I do? It's a big conflict going on in my head. And I spoke to my godmother, Dadi Pushpashanta, who had nurtured me in the spiritual life. I said, Dadi, what should I do? This is what is happening with me. And Dadi, you know, very clear. She says, why don't you tell Baba very frankly and openly, this is what is going on and 
you don't want to go. I said, Dadi, how can I tell Baba? Baba knows everything. And when Baba says I should go, how can I tell him? She said, no, it's not that, it's not bhakti. <laughs> I said, Dadi, then you please accompany me to Baba. <laughs> Fearless. She said, okay, so she spoke to Baba on phone first and we went to Baba in the evening. It was about five o'clock. And we went to Baba's room and she said, Baba, he has to say something to you. I said, yes, sweet child. I said, Baba, this is what is happening with me. And Baba was so, so clear and open, within no time, Baba said, fine, you don't have to go. You do godly service. Baba would arrange a room for you to stay and give you 100 rupees pocket money for every month. <laughs> that again <laughs> became something, you know, sticky in my throat. Mm. I said, Baba, I don't need money. Why? Because those days it was not so expensive. I needed only 15 rupees per, per month. Per month. Only 15 rupees. Five rupees for my washing, five rupees for conveyance, because I, I used public transport and five rupees for toiletries, that's all. So, <laughs> this is one of the things which I experienced. It was something like my test paper, but Baba accepted my sentiments what I shared that because I have promised to my authorities in the Navy that I won't use the technical knowledge what I had gained in the Navy for any work. I won't do any business, I won't do any service anywhere else. I want to leave the Navy only for godly service. So Baba said, fine. Baba himself had actually helped me to do, I mean, to get out mm -hmm. of the place. Yeah. So from then on till today, it has, it has been a beautiful journey. Yes. Um, I'm cognizant of, of time. I hope we can run over a tiny little bit. Manda, I'm sure, will tell me if we can't. Um, but... Um, when Sakhar Baba left the body, uh, again, I, I've not ever heard you share where you were, what your um, feeling was, your reaction. But going on from that, what is the difference in Baba as the friend in Sakhar and now in Aviyakt? And what would you like to share with all of us that will help us to have that experience of Baba as the friend, even tonight? In fact, I had never expected that Baba would leave us so soon, Sakar Baba. And I was going about doing service as per Baba's advice that I should stay in Bombay. Though I had offered a few times that I should come and help in Madhuban. But Baba would say, yes, okay, okay, but then later on he would say, the service for educated children is in big cities. Fine. So it was one o'clock at night when Shilindra Dadi called me because I was staying at my own place, separate place and she was at Gamdevi in Bombay center. 
So she called me at one o'clock without telling me what, why she's asking me to come to the center. She said, come to the center immediately. Mm -hmm. It was like, you know what the officers in the Navy would say, ordering. Order. <laughs> I said, okay. I didn't ask her even, I didn't ha ask her also why she is calling me. Nothing. No thought. I, I had a moped. I took the moped and went to the center. I was there in 10 minutes. When I rang the bell, she opened the door. Normally, she was very pleasant person with a smile always. When she opened the door, her face was like a stone, stone-faced. And she said, just this much, sent I mean one sentence, our Baba is gone. And uh, she went to her room and I sat there in the office, small office come our dining room also, brother's dining room. But it was such a shocking news. My brain was jammed, not thinking, able to think anything. And then it what do you call that shock? It is a shock. And then she came back after a little while saying the train leaves at six in the morning, come to the station, that's all. Do you come 
We won't, won't be in a hurry because this evening it's not going to be a big gathering here. So the arrangement of chairs and all will not be affected so much. It will remain as it is. So I can ask Shashivan to give us more time so that I finish my uh, little chat. Because I have gone to the point of Baba's leaving the body, but there are a few things in between which I like to share. Mm. So, on reaching Madhuban next morning, because Baba left the body on 18th evening, so 19th evening I came, yes, reaching here and Baba's body was kept in history hall. Ice was there and Baba was looking so fresh and we all had something in our mind going on that this is Baba's play with the children, he may get up any time. Not accepting the eventuality as it had happened. But we were just taking care of the body by replacing the ice because ice would come from Abu Road to Mount Abu. But it was winter, severe winter. 18th January is not not uh, leave aside being hot, it's so cold. Temperature going to zero or minus even. So, because we had to wait for Didi Manmoini. Dadiji was there at that time and she was holding the fort. She was keeping her poise very nicely as we have all seen her always. Inside her heart, of course, she had the feelings, but she won't express. And uh, all those who were coming on seeing her and also the silence program going on, no one would express so much. There may be some tears here and there. Then Didi Manmaini arrived on 20th, 20th of January. She was away in Banaras and it was difficult to communicate to her because of the telephones. So when she arrived, then the Dadis, eight Dadis, they had their meeting about the funeral, Jagdish Bhai was there, Ramesh Bhai was there. So, next morning, that was 21st January 1969, it was planned with flowers, you know, nice decoration, on, on a truck, open truck and we all went in silent procession around the town and then the cremation
took place in Madhuban itself with special permission from the collector of Siroi. Those days, these uh, video cameras, they had just come. One sister from Bombay brought that camera. Earlier, no one ever filmed Baba's activities. So, after the procession, the cremation was there. But before taking the body into profession, uh, procession, when Dadi spoke a few words, she broke down. And when she broke down, everyone sobbing, tears, but that was for a short time. Then the body was taken out and after the cremation, as is the system in Brahmin family, Everyone goes for shower, change of clothes, and then coming to the hall, same history hall, which was cleaned afterwards, bhog was offered. And Dadi Gulzar, the official trans medium, she offered the bhog. From then on, Avyakta Bab Dada's part started. Dadi Ishu had her notebook and pen. Dadi Gulzar went into trance, and after a while, her eyes opened. People were expecting that she would come back and then share the message. But instead, Avyakta Bhav Dada came down, slowly opening eyes and giving drishti. And we were all very familiar with Baba's drishti in Sakar and we could feel from Dadi's eyes how the drishti was not of Dadi but Bab Dada. And Baba gave drishti to everyone nicely. Then spoke the first Avyakta Murli just imagine if you have seen that Murli. All of us, the seniors at that time, we all had so many questions in our minds. How will the institution run? Who will guide us? What about the Murli? Like this. And Baba gave directions, making us all feel so light, relaxed, because all the questions were answered in that first Avyakta Murli. And Dadi Gulzar from then on became the official transmedium for Bap Dada's visits. In the beginning, they were almost, if not every day, every alternate days. But later on, little gap came in. And after the Vyakt programs, I think you have all become Baba's children. But 
today's murli sakar murli from that you must have noticed that sakar baba had invoked you earlier this murli was of 1964 the one which was spoken i mean read out this morning it's repeated it was spoken in 1964 when the pope paul 6th came to visit india on christmas and he was supposed to come mama was at that time in bombay baba sent a special message one page message to be sent to the pope in the name of mateshwari saraswati mamma mm-hmm. and that message came from madhuban to bombay dada vishwakshor mamma and myself perhaps dada anand kishor also we were all going through that as per baba's direction the english words had to be corrected mm-hmm. and that message was such with such intoxication though in the name of mateshwari saraswati but written by baba you are welcome to india the land of god's incarnation where you can benefit yourself with the highest knowledge or wisdom you can claim the claim your godly birthright of mukti and jeevan mukti <laughs> and like that's one page murli and after 12:30 I went to the central telegraph office in Bombay to send that and in that of course requesting for personal meeting for five people and when he came there was personal meeting where Jagdish bhai Ramesh bhai Dadi Prakashmani Dadi Ratanmani Dadi Shilindra five of them went to meet the pope personally and presented a copy of real geeta and the charts of kalpa kalpatri trimurti and cycle just imagine sakar babas you know way of doing service at that time baba asked us collect all the lists of those cardinals bishops and uh, priests wherever they are staying and he got one special casket prepared in which these kalpa tree and uh, trimurti and cycle these pictures were you know inserted inside with the uh, small message on top of the casket golden casket oh. godly gift from heavenly godfather shiva <laughs> like this so the the office for uh, for the pope's visit was very close to our center in kolaba uh, rc church was there and because of uh, meeting the people there in their secretariat we were able to get all the addresses and those pictures and prasad toli 
that that was dis distributed to 1000 people at that time 1000 just imagine mm, at that time so baba's ways of spreading the message being father of all souls as per the murli this morning this was done in 1964 and 25th of December 64 when the mass was held there were three lakh people and we were also special invitees there and that was a scene beautiful scene in Bombay people from all over the world were there now what else well just a couple of words in terms of the Avi Act Bapdada and how we can have the feeling uh, two things uh, one, and then, one minute, wait a minute. One no wait a minute, minute. Wait please, a minute. please please <laughs> After Baba became a Vyakt, the first Murli says, previously Sakar Baba had to spend time for himself. Now all the time is for the children. This is something very beautiful to note. Second thing is, previously children had to write, had to come to meet, of course, those meetings, personal meetings, have to be there. But then Baba says, the, you can always invoke Baba early morning in the meditation and Baba would meet you. Whatever you have in your heart, Baba would answer you. And this is my personal experience. Whenever there is anything, I communicate that way, Baba is there. Beautiful. And one special experience that is connected with my health problems mm. Baba has always been there encouraging me and I have never felt that I have any health problems this is wonderful experience how Baba is my friend and he is always beside me, offering me his helping hand whenever I need. I just think of him and he's there. Now Nirvirbha will take us into five minutes of meditation and perhaps if he's okay with that to guide us in terms of that relationship of Kuda Dost, Baba the Friend. Om Shanti. Thank you so much, brother. <laughs> So uh, before meditation, actually, I'd like to just say a big thank you to Nirabai as, as, as well as Sister Wadi. So please, big, big round of applause. Thank you. So that we don't disturb the meditation. But after Nirabai has left, please stay behind because Sister Aruna has some announcements to make about the flags. There was also a gold bracelet found in, the, in Baba's exhibition room. So if, if somebody's lost it, please come and collect it from me. Thank you. May I request everyone to sit straight, please, sit straight. Because if you are too easy in sitting, we may not be able to reach. Where we want to reach.
there will be music in the beginning and the end. But in between, use your power of thought, visualization, reflection conception multiplication experience appreciate that experience and multiply the same Even in the path of bhakti, people say God is just a thought away. Baba also says, the moment you think of me, I am with you. And all the Brahmins, whether young or old, They all have the clear concept. We all have that clear concept. If we want to be in the subtle regions where Brahma Baba receives us, And we also have Shiv Baba's presence there. When we reach subtle regions, we have our own angelic forms. Baba is in angelic form. We are in our angelic forms. Just have the feel of being angels. Flying together. feeling the subtlety of angelic world, looking at our most beloved Avyakt Bap Dada. waiting for us signaling to take us back home away and away telling us return to your own original self of being, beings of light. Star-like, shining bright, complete with purity. perfect in peace, deep and deep in love.
flying with the guiding star back to sweet home of silence there is silence all around complete silence but it's sweet silence in this sweet silence let's connect our minds and hearts to our original perfect selves as is our spiritual parent both father and mother in the form of shining stars all of us shining bright as spiritual stars all around bap dada in complete spiritual consciousness without any fear without any inhibitions without any hindrances just feeling of being our real selves in company of our most most beloved parents bringing us the great feeling of proud children of proud parents with this appreciation of self esteem and feeling the intoxication of being in our original consciousness this togetherness with the supreme being with our supreme parents helps us to spread the most powerful vibrations to the entire universe 